As we saw earlier, an assemble to order process is a special case. More generally, we are limited to processes along the diagonal of this diagram. But what position should we pick along the diagonal? Our choice of process needs to be related to what we are trying to do. In other words, what our competitive priorities are. Let us focus on the two ends of this diagonal and see what generalizations we can draw regarding which competitive priorities draw us towards which end of the diagonal. Let us say I am focusing only on low cost and nothing else. Further, I am required to pick either a line flow or flexible flow process. Which end of the diagonal would I pick? That's easy. It's going to be line flow and mass production. Suppose instead I'm focusing only on consistent quality and nothing else. Which end would I pick? Given that the word consistent implies doing something over and over, line flow fits best. Consistent quality also means making fewer mistakes. Think about this. Would I make fewer mistakes if I did the same thing repeatedly or if I did something different each time? Finally, consistent quality also has to do with conformance to specifications. When I think of the vending machine sandwich, I think about quality in terms of a checklist. Two slices of bread, check. One slice of lettuce, check. Expiry date has not passed, check. Wrapping is still intact, check. And so on. Would I apply the same criteria to your $100 custom made sandwich? Now supposing instead, I am focusing only on top quality and nothing else. Which sandwich would you associate with top quality? The vending machine one or the custom made one? Which process fits well with that? Let us say I wanted to focus on quick delivery. The vending machine sandwich is already made to stock. I just have to pick it up. That's quick for sure. In addition, let's look at the processing time. Steps 1 through 10 can be timed in seconds. Meanwhile, how long did it take you to handcraft your custom sandwich? What about on-time delivery? On-time delivery really depends on meeting the promised time, so wouldn't either end of the diagonal be fine, as long as you kept your promise? Okay, but a promise is only as good as the underlying estimate. If I am producing dozens upon dozens of the same sandwich each week, how well do I know the time taken for each sandwich? On the other hand, if each sandwich I produce is different, how accurate is my estimate of how long the next sandwich will take? What about new product or new service development speed? With the custom-made sandwiches, isn't each new sandwich essentially a new product? Okay, maybe not every sandwich, but you get the picture. How about customization or variety? That's easy. Let's just go high up on the customization axis. Finally, how about volume flexibility? That's easy. Let's just go down the volume axis, right? Actually, that is incorrect. High volume is often the opposite of volume flexibility. Let us say XYZ company mass produces sandwiches using a line flow. This process is well suited to be machine driven, automated and capital intensive. So the XYZ company invests a considerable sum of money into the equipment and facility. To recoup this investment, their operations run 24-7. The profit margins on this sandwich are pretty slim, but they are able to make ends meet at a production rate of, say, 10,000 sandwiches per week. All of a sudden, demand increases to 12,000 sandwiches per week. Can they increase their capacity? They are already running 24-7. How about they try to sweet talk their machines? Machine, machine on the floor. Please won't you produce some more? Sure, that'll work. Instead, what if demand decreases to 8,000 sandwiches per week? In that case, they can simply operate fewer hours. But what answer will they give their banker as to why the loan payments haven't been made? Slim profit margins only work with high volume. Now, how volume flexible is a process that can't handle a 20% volume swing? On the other hand, let's say I come to your custom sandwich shop. You normally produce 10 sandwiches per hour but suddenly the demand increases by 20%. Will you be able to handle 12 sandwiches per hour? Or demand decreases by 20%. Will you be able to handle 8 sandwiches per hour? As we can see, of the 9 competitive priorities, 
Some of them draw us towards a line flow process, while others draw us towards a flexible flow process. If we were to focus on only one order winning competitive priority, our decision would be quite simple. However, we are likely to have a combination of two or three order winners. What if these pull us in different directions? Even if all of our order winners line up neatly on one side of the diagonal, we still have to deal with achieving a threshold level of capability on the remaining competitive priorities, our order qualifiers. For sure, these are going to pull us in different directions. Therefore, our final choice of process may not be at the extreme ends, but rather at a different point on the diagonal. Depending on how important each competitive priority is, we will need to balance the trade-offs by finding an appropriate position.